we've just started recording, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. So um, we're first going to go through a, a little presentation about the vaccine. Then we'll move on to some of the questions that have already been asked. And then after that, everyone in the group today can ask any more questions that they've got. OK, Nicola, I'll hand over to you. Unfortunately, Andy, I can't share my screen. OK, so if I make yeah. you the if I make you the co-host, then you should be able yeah. to do that then. There we go. <gasps> Can everybody see that? Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. So you know who me and Maeve are now. So today me and Maeve are going to talk to you about kind of the COVID vaccination program in Manchester and some of the work that we've been doing with all the vaccination sites to support people with learning disabilities to make their patient journey a little bit easier and make those things called reasonable adjustments. So um, we're able to support you to get um, the vaccination. Um, so do you want me to just start, Maeve, in terms of yeah, looking please. at reasonable adjustments? Okay, this is completely off the cuff. We've not practiced this, so. <laughs> um, okay, so we know, don't we, um, legally, that all health services have a responsibility to make something called reasonable adjustments. So changes should be made to services to support people that are vulnerable. So people with learning disabilities, dementia, mental health needs, um, with physical disabilities to make things easier for them to access health services for lots of different reasons. And that's a legal obligation under the Equality Act. So part of mine and Maeve's role um, in working with people with learning disabilities is to have conversations with all those services in Manchester around what can be done in the vaccination program to support people with learning disabilities. So I know that people um, that have recently had the flu vaccination will know that a big reasonable adjustment for that was the nasal vaccination and May is going to talk to you a little bit more about um, the different vaccines <clears throat> um, shortly but actually um, that's one of the biggest things isn't it because there isn't a nasal vaccination we've got lots of people with learning disabilities in Manchester that might be a little bit anxious about having a needle I know that I'm one of them um, so, so it, it's about how we can support people uh, to plan for that appointment um, and then make sure that that the health professionals that are supporting you to have your vaccine are aware that you're a little bit anxious so they're making things called reasonable adjustments. So I've just, there was lots of guidance out there and we've shared this with all health professionals across Manchester because the Department of Health says that we've got to make reasonable adjustments and there's lots of things that we can consider for people with learning disabilities. So the first thing is something called desensitization. So that's about us knowing that we want to have our vaccine, that it's going to be a needle um, and about breaking that down and maybe thinking about it before we go to the vaccination site or the doctor or nurse visits us in our home. Um, so if that's something that you think would benefit you, I'm going to send out some resources via Andy um, after. So just some little tips about things that you can be thinking about and videos that are out there online and accessible information. But if it is something that you're struggling to do on your own or with your carer or your family, then we also have three learning disability vaccination champions across Manchester. So in North Manchester, there's a lady called Sasha. In Central, there's a lady called Leone. And in South Manchester, there's a lady called Emma. So I'm going to share those details with you as well. So if you know that, that you're going to need a little bit more help with that then that's fine just give one of those nurses a ring so other things that we can think about doing is making a longer appointment so actually in the vaccination clinics because they're trying to vaccinate lots of different people um, and you know and very quickly the appointment slots are very short so when you're booking your appointment make sure that that's something that you ask for and me and Maeve are working very closely with those vaccination sites around thinking about some of them considerations now um, so thinking about kind of things like Emla cream, so if that's going to help you or kind of, de uh, kind of de oh, I can't speak this morning, thinking about looking away or listening to some music to support you not to think about having your injection, um, but thinking about nice things um, so you can have your vaccination and then we can go off and do something nice. If there are things that are going to help you, there are things that we've discussed with them vaccination sites so they know that some people are going to come along with some of them resources. And another thing that's a big reasonable adjustment is about bringing your carer or somebody that you um, 
that somebody supports you and knows you well and they're going to support you when you're anxious so when you arrive at the vaccination clinic just let one of the marshals know that that's really important to you and they're aware that that's a big reasonable adjustment for people with learning disabilities so Another thing that we've acknowledged and we know in Manchester is all the vaccination sites look very, very different. And unfortunately, we don't have very much say about where people go at the minute. And that's something that Maeve and the team are working to look at making more flexible appointments moving forward. But at the minute, if you receive your appointment, um, what we're trying to do is provide people with as much information as we possibly can. So the vaccination champions and the learning disability team have done a social story for each of the sites. So you can have a see what they look like um, and around what to expect when you get there. So some vaccination sites are very, very small and they're just health centres where others uh, are big community centres um, or, you know, or a bigger environment. So it would look very different. So just to give people a bit of time to prepare about what things are gonna look like. Is that okay? Great. So uh, do you want me to hand over to you now, Maeve? Um, I can just add a, some some comments to that because yeah. um, I've been lucky enough that I've been able to work at the sites and I've also been going to um, some care homes to deliver vaccines. So, um, yeah, I can just talk a bit about what I've seen so far. So, um we uh, are able to use the numbing creams if people need to, but you would need to talk to your doctor about that first so they can get a prescription. What I have actually seen is that most people wouldn't need the numbing cream at all because um, the needle is really, really very thin and the liquid that goes in is really tiny as well. And so actually people have it and they don't even realize that they've had it. They're like, oh, was that it? So lots of people are finding that it's actually not too bad at all. Um, and yeah, I just want to kind of, yeah, repeat what uh, Nicola said about bring someone you trust, bring someone like a carer who, you know, if you do find certain things difficult, like lots of loud noises, you know, big spaces, things like that, then we can know about it. You can tell us and we'll do everything we can to try and get that easier for you. So yeah, um, we're here to help. Um, and if we need to help you out in a slightly different way by changing what's going around, then let us know and we'll do everything we can. We have worked with people that have been to the vaccination centres. So I think we've had lots of positive <sighs> feedback around um, reasonable adjustments being made. So people um, turning up on the day and saying, I've got a learning disability and this mm -hmm. is what I need, or their carers saying that, and then things being um, changed and made a little bit easier for that person. So there are lots of positive stories out there. And I guess a big thing with attending the vaccination site is that you will have to wait after having your vaccine for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that can be hard for lots of people for lots of different reasons. But if you need to be in a quieter space or you need reasonable adjustments about that, then make sure you're just letting the doctor or the nurse know and they can try and arrange that or support you in the best possible way. Mm. Yeah. One example of something we've been able to do for some people is, um, so I've worked at a big centre called the Jane Centre and actually a patient said, I'm going to find it really hard to come in and we actually went out to the car and because they were with someone else that was okay so someone could still watch them for 15 minutes after but it meant that you know they didn't have to leave that space where they felt safe um, so if you're if you get worried about coming to us and you and we think that there's a different way we can do something please just ask we can't change things a hundred percent of the time but a lot of the time we can definitely make things a lot easier and a lot better. Um, but yeah, usually once people have come to get it, they're like, oh, that wasn't too bad. So sometimes it's just the nervousness that makes it worse. And uh, it, yeah, people are quite glad when they've had it done. So um, I think we also had some true or falses, didn't we, Nicola? Nicola has some really good... Now. Yeah, good um, things for us to think about. Now, 
I imagine that you guys will know the answers to a lot of these things already, but it gives us the opportunity to talk about it. Okay, so um, I can't actually see everybody. Can you see everybody, Maeve? I can see four of us. So, okay. um, but we d I can see the chat. So if you want me to keep an eye on the chat, yeah, um, we could do that. Uh, Andy, are you able to see everyone or do we have a way of sharing more of the screens? I can. Oh, actually. I, only have the I think four down the side, the same as everyone else. Yeah, let me just. I think, if, yeah, I can now actually. I can do a little. Um, like a little grid video. Yeah. yeah. So I've got that now. So we're going to ask you some true or qu false questions. So what I need you to do. So if you think that the answer is true, we want you to put your thumbs up. And if you think it's false, then to put your thumbs down. Okay, great. And I'll do a quick skip through my grid. Okay, so the first It's, it's not a test. It's just no, it's so we can test, talk about yeah. stuff. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the first one is um, the vaccinations aren't safe because they were developed quickly. So do you think that that's true or do you think it's false? Yeah, so we've got Tracy's going false, Andy's going false, Mavis, we've got lots Alex. of falses. Alex is as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's great. okay if you think that's true because we can talk yeah. about that now. Yeah, so um, the answer is false for that one. So Maeve, do you want to explain why? Do you want me to go into it? Um, I'm, I'm happy to explain a bit more why. So... Yeah, you know, this does feel really new. Everything's felt really new and a bit scary in the last year or so, hasn't it? So essentially, when we when we started to realise what was happening with the coronavirus, they started lots of work all over the world to say, hmm, what is this virus and what can we do about it? So as early as January last year, they shared what the, this was, and then lots of different scientists all over the world started working on it really, really quickly. Okay. So it meant that people were working all the time, as much time as they could, to try and get something like a vaccine developed. So normally, different medicines like vaccines would take a bit longer to develop, so sometimes a couple of years. And that's because they go through lots of different steps to check that they're safe for people to have. Because the number one priority for any new medicine is to check it's safe. There's no point in giving a medicine if it's not safe. OK. Um, and so they did all the steps we would normally do to develop this medicine, but they did them a lot more quickly. Um, so they instead of going one, two, three, sometimes they did two steps and they were doing it at the same time, but for different people. So they've had all the checks we'd normally have and they tested lots and lots of people. So for the two main vaccines that we're using, they tested over 50,000 people in that first lot that they were looking at. So it's looking at lots of people and um, we can, so all the right work's been done. Everything was just done really quickly because this was a big emergency for the whole world. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, any questions about that? Because I know this has been a big worry for lots of us. I'm going to have a look. I've got a question, if you don't mind. Was that Sammy? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Well, I've been told that I'm on the like, list about the priority list because of my asthma and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I've not had the actual letter yet to say when I'm doing my vaccine. When would I receive that? So we'll... we'll there's been lots of questions like that. So we'll come back to that in a bit more detail, Sammy. But what we do know is that we've had a bit of a to-do list. So we've had a list of everyone that we should contact at different times. And we're working through that bit by bit. So yeah. from what you're saying, you'll be invited okay. very soon. But we have to go in that order. And the government is telling us when, okay. when we can invite certain people. But there were lots of good, really, really good questions on that. So we'll discuss that in a bit more, um, a bit more uh, in, in a little bit, if that's okay, Sammy. Yeah, that's fine, thank you. Real. Do you want to go ahead to the next one, Nicola? I think Richard I think might have a question. Oh, so sorry, sorry, Richard. 
Go for it. Uh, is it true or false that Manchester's did back half of its vaccination drug because they do got too much of it? So I heard, is it true that Manchester's had half of its vaccination done because we've got too much of the vaccine? Yeah, that's why it, that's why I was it, it, seeing on television and read in yeah. the news. Yeah, so when we talk about the city of Manchester, um, actually, if you look at our who lives here, we don't have lots and lots and lots of the older people. So in, in the centre of Manchester, we've been able to go down that to-do list of people to do a bit quicker than in some other places. So it means that sometimes then, you know, for example, some slightly younger people, like above 70, we've been able to offer the vaccine to them kind of a bit earlier. Um, and another thing is that we are just, when we have the vaccine, it's really special. We don't want to waste any of it. So if we can offer as we go down that list, then, then, then we do. But we have to be careful because the government isn't allowing us to offer it too far down that list yet. Um, we have to make sure that the people who need the vaccine most are getting it as early as possible. Does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, thank right. you. Okay. There we go. So the next one is the COVID vaccination is only available via injection. So do we think that that's true or do we think it's false? Have we got any thumbs up? Thumbs up in the middle. Great. So we've got lots and lots of thumbs up on this one. And that is that is true um, that the, the COVID vaccination is currently only available in an injection. Have you got anything to add there, Maeve? Yeah, so the good news is that um, there's a, a big group who checks all of our medicines that we make and also um, says whether we can give different medicines and they do research as well. And they have said we can start to do some research on a nasal um, COVID vaccine, coronavirus vaccine. So they started some uh, work on that in December. Um, so sadly, we can't offer that to anyone at the moment. And so it's really important to come and get the, uh, the COVID vaccination with the injection, okay? But maybe in the future, we'll be able to give some, some of the nose one as well. It's not worth waiting for that right now because no. we don't have any promises with the, the, the study just yet. But fingers crossed for the future. Fingers crossed, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. like these other vaccines, we'll be able to get that research done at super speed. But... Um, it's so much better just to come and get it while you can with the injection because it works really well. Great. Thank you, Maeve. So the next question is, the COVID vac vaccine will alter your DNA. So do you think that that is true or do you think it's false? Some quick answers. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Great, so we've got lots of thumbs down on this. Um, and that is right, it is a false statement. I'm gonna let Maeve explain that a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, so the way these vaccines work is by teaching our body's immune system. So our immune system is how we fight infections. It, it teaches us what the coronavirus uh, looks like. And so that if your body comes into contact with coronavirus in the future, it recognizes it and it can fight it off. So yeah, how does it do this? Well, essentially the two main vaccines that we're using both essentially show our little cells, tiny little portions of what the coronavirus looks like. So um, then if you ever had that in the future, it would recognize it really quickly and get rid of it from your body. Um, to change your, so your DNA is like uh, instructions for your body on how to produce cells, how to produce different parts of your body. Um, and 
all that information is contained at the very middle of a cell, and that's called a nucleus. Okay. So the good thing about all these vaccines is they don't go anywhere near the nucleus. Okay. They don't go anywhere near that instruction manual, which is our DNA. And so there's no way it can alter our DNA. All it does is tell our cells, the little um, parts of our cells that make um, tiny proteins, it tells us uh, what that coronavirus looks like so that our body knows it for the future. Thanks for that, Maeve. No problem. Any questions on that? Just going to look across. No, brilliant. Okay. Oh, I there's a hand. Is that yeah. a rose? Is that a hand, Rosie? Hi, Rosie. Rosie Are we able yeah. to put you off mute? Yeah. I'm off it now. Yeah, brill, Rosie. Have you got a question? Yeah. Um. Uh. uh I went to the centre in Washington Road. Uh. Um. I I done an, uh, the vaccine injection last week. Mm. You um, had. Uh, Sorry, Rosie, did you have the vaccination last week? Yeah, I did, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. How how was it for you? How did you find it? Yeah, all right. It's all right. Yeah, brilliant. It's yeah. not too bad, is it? That, as I come back, another 12 weeks. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you'll have to go back for a second dose in about 12 weeks. Yeah. And that's so that you can get that full protection. Okay, that's... Uh, um, um, Sorry, um, I'd like to no, know what's in it. it. Yeah, I'd like to know what's in it, you see. Yeah, brilliant. So that's a question we'll come on to soon. Um, yeah. I think we've got a couple more questions and then we'll, we'll come back to that, Rosie, if that's okay. That's fine. Brilliant. So the next question is... I do. Hi, Ruth. Oh, hi. Is it imp important... Not yeah, it is. You can get waters and things. Sorry, say that again, Ruth. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Sorry about that. Um, you must have lots of drinks and food as well. Oh, okay. That's that's what the, that's what they said. Lots of fluids after you've had your vaccine. Vaccine, yes. That's yeah. A really good idea. Yeah, really good advice, that. Do you play too lots of fluids? Exactly. Oh. So after the vaccine, yeah, after that, drink lots of water and take it easy for the rest of the day. That's always a good idea. Food as well. That's very important. Okay, Ruth. Exactly, Ruth. No, that's really good. That's really good. And exercise as well. Yeah, exercise is what you must. Yeah. Yeah, exercise keeps you healthy, but you don't have to do too much exercise after the the the, the vaccine. No, you can take it easy that day. So I'll hand over to Nicola. Great. So the next question is: you can get COVID nineteen, so you can get the virus from having the vaccine. So do we think that that's true, or do we think that that's false, or are we not sure? So we've got lots of thumbs down. We've, oh gosh, I'm flipping over my screen. Uh, we've got some people that are in the middle. Should we ask Maeve to give us the answer? We've got a couple of thumbs up as well there, Nicola. Okay. Ah, okay. So the, the good news is that you can't get COVID from the vaccine. Okay. Um, so... Like I mentioned before, the vaccine itself doesn't contain any COVID. It's quite clever. It actually has a tiny, tiny bit of protein that looks a bit like a part of COVID. And so it doesn't do anything. It just goes to your cells. Your cells go, hmm, what's that? I don't recognize that. And then they start produce something called antibodies to prepare the body that if your body saw the real coronavirus in the future, it would recognize that and go, hey, I don't like that. And then it would fight it off. So there's no, no coronavirus in the vaccine. But what is important is that when you go to have your vaccine, 
keep your distance from people still keep on washing your hands and also wear a mask if you're able to as well because of course if you come into close contact with people and you don't yet have that protection from the vaccine there's still a chance you know that you know that we, we want to still keep you safe so and we'll we'll go on to letting you know about how long it takes for the vaccine to give you that protection as well because it doesn't happen straight away I think Stephen Blake's got a question. Stephen? Brilliant. Go for it, Stephen. Stephen. I was going to say, I was, um, is it, is this vaccine, is it very safe? Yeah. For people? Yeah. So we've, we've tested, you know, t tens of, lots and lots of people. So tens of thousands of people all across the world. And as I mentioned before, the number one priority for any new medicine is to check it safe. OK, so when they've tested it on lots and lots and lots of people, only a very, very small number have had problems with it. OK, and the problems we have seen have been people getting bad allergic reactions, and that's to the Pfizer vaccine. But when they looked at it more closely, it only happened in people who already get very bad allergic reactions that we call anaphylaxis okay and if you okay. ever well, had course. that that would already be in your notes and that's also why we keep an eye on you for 15 minutes so we can check how are you doing because if people get a bad reaction it's ten that's it happens in that furnace in almost all cases okay that's why we watch you mm -hmm. Okay, was that all right, Stephen? Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Should we move on to the next question then? Two more to go. Okay. So the next statement is, I've already had COVID-19, so I don't need to get vaccinated. Do we think that that's true or do we think it's false? Lots of quick answers there. Um, I'll just flick through. So there's lots of thumbs down. Most people have got the thumbs down and that is correct. It's false. So I'll get Maeve to give us um, a bit of a summary why. Yeah, so we, so if you've had COVID in the past, the chances that your body has said, hey, I didn't like that and has already produced some antibodies and said, hmm, I'll try and be ready for next time. But we don't know how long those last for. And so it's a good idea to get a COVID vaccine so that we can make sure that your body will um, have that response. It'll have that immune response to fight any COVID infection. And also, if people have had um, a COVID virus before and they were actually quite well with it or, you know, they didn't have any symptoms, we don't know how good their uh, antibodies will be. So it's always a good idea to get a vaccine. So we know you've had the right dose, that we know that your body's going to produce the right number of antibodies to fight off any future infection. Thanks for that, Maeve. We got any questions? I think Rosie Looks might like, have a hand. Yeah. You'll have to unmute yourself again, Rosie. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you have to wash, you wash your hands every day and drink a glass of water mm -hmm. and exercise, but not much. On the day of the vaccine, yeah. Take it yeah. easy on the day. But other than that, you do is you do do what you feel like. Yeah. I'll make sure uh, uh, it's sit at home, be safe and save lives. Exactly. Exactly. The, the the best protection we've got is staying at home when we can, okay, if we don't need to go somewhere and to get the vaccine. That's the best protection we've got. Andy's yeah. got his hand up. If, if you've already had COVID, would you go further down the list to be vaccinated? No. So we want to ensure that people, 
you know if if they're in a in a vulnerable group so more likely to get bad disease with coronavirus then they'd still get that offer um so uh, no they wouldn't they wouldn't go down the list other than if they've had coronavirus in the last month we have to wait we want to make sure that someone's feeling much better and we wait one month after someone's had coronavirus before we give the vaccine but if you had it in the summer, then it wouldn't really affect you, would it? Really? No, if you had it in the summer, it would, be, it would be fine to have that now. When they've done studies to look at what people's antibodies are like from the, the uh, infection, if they had it last January, they might not have the good antibodies now. So it's always a good idea to get this vaccine. Thank you. Right, and we've got Sam's got a hand up. The question is, when you, when you had the COVID, did the, the job that you have to give the, when you go to give them the percent, is it the liquid that they need? Are we eligible to give that? Are you talking about if you've had COVID and giving plasma for yeah. other people who might be poorly? Yeah. Yeah. So if you've had coronavirus, um, then some people are able to offer their plasma. And just to explain for other people, that's part of our blood that contains the antibodies, that contains that memory of, oh, what did that COVID look like? Yeah. Um, usually, um, because people need to donate quite a lot of blood for us to take out the plasma part of the blood, then it's usually people have to be a bit bigger. So it's usually more men that can donate the plasma because they've got more blood in them. They're bigger. <laughs> um, but you can always ask, um, but you do have to be over a certain weight or you're too little to give plasma. And we always still have to check that you're well and that it would be a suitable thing for you to, to donate blood because that isn't the right thing for everyone. But that's a good yeah, question. Just, yeah. Just wanted to ask that question. Yeah. Great. And then I think Stephen had his hand up. And uh, so Stephen Hughes and then Stephen Blake, I think. Yeah, that was right before I was just yeah. going to say the same. Yeah. Um, my, my question is, why do antibodies disappear after a certain time? Because if you have um, like childhood diseases, measles, mumps, whatever, you know, you, you're highly unlikely to get them again because you've got the antibodies yeah. in your body. So why does a COVID antibody disappear, whereas a, a measles, for argument's sake, but antibody doesn't? That's a really good question. And I suppose the answer to that is that we don't yet know how long COVID antibodies will last. And it's going to be a bit different for different people. So when they've done studies on people who got coronavirus last year in January or, you know, January, February, March time, a lot of them still had really good antibodies, uh, anti antibodies, but some not so good. So to be honest with you, Stephen, we're still learning quite a lot about coronavirus and we don't know quite how long it lasts, the antibodies last in most people and also um yeah it, i'm i'm not quite sure why some of them last longer than others but it, we might be in a situation where um we need to give another little co coronavirus vaccine every year like a booster like we do for the flu jab for example um and how we do it for sometimes people need hep if they get an immunization for hepatitis so a virus that causes a kind of liver irritation then some people need lots of us need more than one dose to make sure we've got the antibodies so it kind of depends on the specific virus and also then depends on different people and some people will might need a bit more than others but we'll, we're going to be learning lots over the next year about these antibodies and how long they last Thanks, Stephen. I think Stephen Blake was next. What happens if you don't have it, this uh, just uh, injection? What happens then? Yeah, so um, we know that the coronavirus is in our community. I think we probably all know someone who's had it, don't we? Um, 
And so if you did not have the vaccine, if you came in contact with the coronavirus, you know that the likelihood is that you would you would you would get the virus. And we know for some people, they might not know, they might not know that they've got the virus. And for some other people, they can get really very sick with it, because this is a new virus that our bodies haven't seen before. Um, about one in 20 people are at risk of getting very bad the illnesses from coronavirus and as you probably already know Stephen some people even have to then go to hospital because they're sick with the coronavirus so it's hard to say for one person what's the you know what would happen you know if if someone came we we can't say for each person how they would react but the best protection we can have is by having obviously the distance mask lots of hand washing and getting the vaccine and I think this is our our best chance of getting back to to normal hopefully soon if we've all got that vaccine and our bodies all recognize oh what's coronavirus and knows the best way to, to fight that that's good thanks no problem thanks very much but as a, you know you know no one will be forced to have a vaccine so we want everyone to be able to make their own decision um and we want people to get that right information as well so they can make the decision. OK, so as a reassurance, no one would ever force you to get a vaccine if you had had a really good think about it and it you, you were quite clear that you didn't want it. We've got a few hands. So we've mm. got Richard and then I think after that was Rosie. Am I right, Andy? I think. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So over to you, Richard. Uh, I've got a heart D heart disease and epilepsy mm. it did affect my tablets when I take them yeah so when when we offer um the vaccine to people it's a we we often ask about certain people's medicines the with the epilepsy and with a heart condition often it, it would be even more important for you to have the vaccine okay when you come for your vaccine, we ask about certain medicines. So if it's hard to remember, it's good to bring a list of the medicines with you yeah, so you can show. Is. Fabulous. Brilliant. Um, if you're on blood thinning medicines, we're only using a very, very tiny, fine needle, but it's good to let us know so that we can put some gentle pressure on there after and make it less likely to bruise. But thankfully, I've not heard of anyone having any bruising after the vaccine. But if you're on a blood thinner, we just put a gentle pressure to make that less likely. Is aspirin a blood thinner? I'm on aspirin as well. Yeah, so you would tell the doctor or the nurse or the pharmacist giving the vaccine that you're on a blood thinner and that, that the, the aspirin. So uh, the aspirin um, isn't a problem. We just give me that gentle pressure for a bit longer after the vaccine um, and I can reassure you that it doesn't um, interfere with any of your epilepsy medicines okay so when they've done trials they've included that the research they've included people with epilepsy in the trial to make sure that it's safe All right thank you no problem Rosie, did you have a question? You'll, you'll have to unmute yourself again, Rosie. So about that. Um, I was going to say, uh, um, well, I went to the hospital with it, with um, your heart problem as well. Um, and I, I find out I got, I find out I had your, your whole, your, your whole, uh, I mean, your heart. Mm -hmm. All that, and... No, um, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. that sounds scary, Rosie. Yeah. So, um, but um, that would not stop you from getting the vaccine. So it'd still be safe for someone with that to get the vaccine. But if you ever worried about any health condition and if the vaccine is right for you, just tell the person at the time or have a talk to your doctor, your GP, and they can they can. For any, anyone with specific health worries, they can let you know. Well, um, uh, yeah, last time, what I thought, the second time, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just found out I had uh, 
I had a, 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 I had a, a fluid on my heart. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Because <laughs> my heart's rather close then. Oh gosh. So they'll need to keep a very close and eye then, on that. So make sure you're talking to your yeah. doctor regularly and you've got plans with your appointments. Um, and if you, you know, you need to see the heart doctor and you don't hear back, just let your GP know because they'll, they'll, they'll be able to see what's going on with that. Uh, and then I went to doctors, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what a corner where I live in now. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I did have had a, a fluid injection as well. The flu injection. Yeah. yeah. I had that well. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's another really good way of trying to keep us safe from getting bad chest infections at this time. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a question a bit related to that in the in the questions, weren't there, Andy? Yeah. So we will come back to that. There's a question related to that later on. Mm. OK, thank you. Hey, thank you. I just noticed some of you got your hand up or not. I couldn't. Yeah, I have. If that's possible, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yep. But going back to having the vaccine, is the person that you're uh, looking after or helping even not got the capacity to say about the vaccine if they want it or not? How do we go about that? So, I, 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 I struggle to hear a bit of that, but are you asking about a carer or are you asking about someone who isn't able to say whether they want the vaccine or not. Yeah, it's the person that the person, like the support worker, is mm -hmm. helping. If they haven't mm -hmm. got the capacity or they can't say you don't want the vaccine or not, how do they go about that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So if someone isn't able to um, uh, understand what vaccines are for and yeah. have a good think about that, and tell yeah. us what they would like yeah. then as doctors we make sure we think hmm who who's caring for that person and what do they yeah. think and then we also have our doctor hats on and we have <laughs> a look at the notes so we think from a medical point of view as to think right is this vaccine the best person for this individual and that we, yeah. we you might have heard of best interests so is yeah. this in this person's best interest to have the vaccine and so, um, for example, I've talked to some parents who have lasting power of attorney for their daughter who can't tell me if she wants the vaccine or not. Yeah. And they said, hmm, because we've had yeah. all this information, we're quite happy for her to have the vaccine. Then once we've looked at everything and weighed it up, we can still go ahead and give it. And then we make sure that when we do give the vaccine, we make that as calm an environment as we can. We make that as, so it's as easy as possible for that person. Yeah, thank you. The other question I have as well the, about the vaccine. Well, I know children are minimised to have the COVID, COVID virus, but would you, would you say children should get the vaccine as well or is it just for adults? So, so far, um, it is just for adults. There are some, some exceptions, some rare times where we could give it to a child, but usually not. Um, and that would have to come from a specialist doctor if we were to give a child. Okay, have you, have, have you seen it in children? Because there are no COVID around, but is it yeah. rare in children or not? So children are much less likely to get really bad disease, bad chest infections from the coronavirus when we compare them to adults. But it can yeah. happen. It's rare, but it can happen. And so if there are children who have history of, um, you know, um, like... Um, their development's been very different and yeah. they're very prone to really bad chest infections. Sometimes we can talk to the hospital doctor and we can rarely give it. We're not doing that very often. And no. part of that is because the studies so far have been done on adults. They have been done as, on children as young as 12. Okay. And they're currently doing more research looking at children more. So I think in the future, we will be able to vaccinate more children, but we're not quite there yet. 
Yes, we're only I offering mean, it to those who are really, really vulnerable to getting very bad chest infections. No problem. Are the, in children, are the symptoms a lot the same as an adult or is it less and worse? Usually not. So usually if children get it, their symptoms are much less bad normally. But of course, if you were ever worried um, that, you know, a child had a bad runny nose or wasn't coping well, then it would always be important to talk to your doctor. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Nicole, you're okay. on, you on mute, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, so are you ready for the next question? Yeah. Yeah, I just wondered, I think Christine and Ruth had the hand up. So should we say that this is the last question? We'll finish... And then and then we'll go we'll to go other to... questions yeah yeah, yeah we'll go good to idea I'm okay to ask them questions that i've had from other people who can't make it on as well if that's all yes right. yeah, exactly yeah, we definitely. need to have enough time for that yeah. too yeah so we'll get this presentation done and then we'll have lots of questions yeah christine and joyce me i want to say i'd like to have it done because i'm, I'm still waiting to have one done mm. i don't want to get poorly what the, the vaccination Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and I'm I'm glad that you want it done. So, um, we are working our way through the lists. Um, your GP will contact you, so they'll write to you, send a text, or they'll call you. Okay, and then yeah. they can get that arranged, and that yeah. that should be soon. I have had a letter about it. Mm -hmm. You have. Yes, I have. Brilliant. Okay. So if there's a number to call on that letter, then call them or get someone to help you to call them. Alex, Alex's carer is waving like mad there. Do you want to? Sorry. Yourself? Is it Michelle? Don't know. That's yeah, it. Uh, just because Christine's just made that comment, uh, I'm actually, it, it's something that's really happened really peculiar with Christine. I She got a letter last week. Um, I rang them up to book the appointment because she said that she was in the category four because she's over mm. 70. Mm -hmm. So I rang up, um, gave all the details and everything, um, and the letter actually said on it, in fact, I've actually got the letter with me here because I had to ring back again to the GP yesterday. Mm. Uh, so I rang the booking office and they said to me, oh, um, can you give us her national insurance number, uh, her NHS number? So okay. I said, she said it's on the letter, and I said there's no number on this letter mm. at all. So she uh, said no, it, there is. It's on the letter, and said no, it's not. I've actually got the letter here mm. um, of her letter, and I said she said no, it should be on there. I said no, it's not. I said I'm a bit worried in case this is a false letter, really. Mm. So anyway, she rang up to book it, and she said. No, she can't have it booked. And I said, well, why, why is it saying on this letter that that's what I've got to do is book and ring and make this appointment? So um, I rang up the GPs yesterday. I tried doing it online. It won't accept it. Mm. GPs can't do it. So it's, it's just been forwarded now to the practice manager, which I'm still waiting for a phone okay. call. Back. But I'm just concerned because of over fraudulent things going around yeah it's a really fact, important point yeah only because her letter did not have her nhs number on it so mm. we don't know where this has come from even though we've said it's come from trafford it's the clinical commissioning group mm. that, that's you know i can only go off what's on this letter but obviously yeah. something's not right so that's a funny thing so where we've been doing vaccines locally we haven't needed people's nhs numbers but i don't know if trafford is any different um so don't worry too much if you don't have an nhs number um, no i found it no i got it off another letter real. so i gave it to them and they still mm. said it wasn't coming up even with their nhs uh, you know number it still was the same so yeah. We're not sure what's gone on here um, or why. And that's probably why Christine is, is mentioning it because yeah. obviously, um, I, you know, she knew she got the letter to have in the vaccine and now all of a sudden we can't even book it. So, no, that is strange. Um, so there should be, um, if, if in group four, so above 70, then definitely should be invited for the vaccine right about now. Yeah. And I would just see what they say, the, the practice managers say. Um, 
sometimes we're booking them in the GP surgery and it's our own receptionist and admin staff booking the appointments. And sometimes it is going to kind of like a, a booking appointment group uh, lots of different staff so see what they say yeah. um you've done the right thing to chase that up um i wonder if there's some sort of admin error um definitely be cautious to potential scams um so just as a f for everyone you should never ever ever have to pay for a vaccination or any of these treatments okay everything should be coming as free um and yeah, if you're not sure about a letter, do flag it up to, well, yeah, I, exactly as you've done. Yeah. Well, I'd be concerned. I mean, obviously this group is for people with disabilities. So mm. I'd be concerned. I mean, luckily enough, our guys have got carers that are actually acting on their behalf. Mm. But what about if people haven't got somebody to actually go in, you know, go into totally. more depth these letters and don't know what they need to do? Totally. So I'm happy to just get some details about if you're concerned about any uh, scam letters, things like that, where that could be reported to. So I can get that information for Andy to share. Um, and um, Nicola and I are working in a group to try and ensure that when we're inviting people for appointments, that it's done in an as accessible way as possible. So yeah. I've, I've, I've flagged up to the company who have organized a lot of the booking to say, hey, we need to think more about this group. We need to make it as easy as possible for, for everyone to be able to access those appointments, not just our adults, you know, our, our community with, with a learning disability. So, um, yeah, if, if you're coming into difficulties, um, please just let someone know. You can let members people's first know. I'm happy to be contacted as well. If you right, want to okay. do that via uh, Kathy, and then Kathy's got my email that she can pass on, no problems at all, and then then we'll we'll pass it on to Maeve and Nicola and do that via Kathy. Is that all right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is another question, but I'll leave me other question. I've got two more, but I'll leave that till later. I'll wait until you've gone through everything because they have got two please. more. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're, we're looking to move on to them. Do you want to ask the last question then, Nicola? If that's all right. Yeah. False? Yeah. So. I think everyone will get this one. So the vaccination site should make reasonable adjustments for people with learning disabilities. Do we think that that's true or do we think it's false? <laughs> I could see Morg's hand, but up even before you asked the question, <laughs> he was he was quick off the mark. <laughs> Is that okay? Brilliant. Great. Superb. Thank you, Nicola.